Do you know most important thing for any YouTube on this platform? That is your feedback. Thank you very much for every single like and every single comment you put on my videos because those are huge encouragement me to do more and more content. Otherwise, I'm just talking to this empty camera. I have no idea how you digest these videos, whether you like it or whether it's important to you, whether it's helpful to you. I have no idea unless you put a comment or a like. So thank you very much for everything you do. That is what encouraging me to do more and more creative and more and more advanced content because I know you like it. So if you like this video, please put a comment or a thumbs up, give your feedback. Also, if you like this type of content, go ahead and subscribe to this channel. I'll make sure you're never going to regret about subscribing to this channel. If you're already working on a production system, the most common problem you have is getting a downtime. Why? Because probably roll out a feature, probably deploy a bug fix, or probably uh, do a config change or whatever you want to take a downtime on a production system. That is not easy. Especially, this is getting more complicated if your system is working across time zone. Like you are working on a global deployment, this is more hard because at any given time, maybe at least some user doing something on your system. There are enough solutions for this, like a blue-green deployment, canary deployment, there are rollout deployment, there are so many solutions, but still, we have, as a software engineers, we have a huge responsibility to make the zero downtime deployment happen. We sometimes think this is a DevOps responsibility, this is an infra team responsibility because they need to make sure they have to set up enough uh, tools and configuration to make the zero downtime. No, they can do it. It is your job, it is your responsibility to support them to make it happen. Today, we are going to discuss how you can achieve zero downtime deployment on a microservice. So this particular video, I'm going to explain through a Kubernetes and some JavaScript based uh, framework, but this is not limited to Kubernetes. This is maybe your on-prem data center, maybe you are running on your dedicated server, maybe it's a Java application, maybe it's a not uh, at all JavaScript application. Totally fine. What you need to is graph the concept, not just the command or anything what I'm giving you. Just graph the concept so you can uh, do this implementation to your own solution. If someone asks what is my strategy and how I can obtain downtime and how frequently I'm getting downtime, I would say zero. I don't need any downtime. At any peak hours, any given time, I can roll out any feature to production without breaking because because it's a zero downtime deployment that is the microservice fundamental practice deploy independently anytime you want the most common solution people provide for this is a rollout deployment i have seen projects went to kubernetes just to get the rollout deployment so what is the rollout deployment let's say you have employee service you have a 10 instances are running you first deploy your new version to five instances when those are up and running then you take down other five instances and deploy the a new version to those so that means at any given time at least one service is running to take the traffic but that doesn't solve our problem here is why let's say you have 10 instances running on your kubernetes cluster from the same service let's say employee service itself so now kubernetes you are rolling out a new deployment and then your first five instances goes down to get the new version when the Kubernetes try to take down your instance, you are middle of something. You need some time to complete that, right? So then Kubernetes can handle it. Kubernetes doesn't know who's doing what because it's orchestration framework, right? It, what it does is mainly container orchestration. Yeah, you can use some mesh framework like a linker do something, but none of them knows what actually service is doing. That's why we have a huge responsibility to software engineers to make sure we are triggering graceful shutdown so that DevOps team can handle this rollout deployment properly. I get that there are libraries and there are frameworks to do that, but I'm going to show you how we can do this ourselves so then we have 100% control on this. So in this scenario, we are going to talk about a service which deploy on a Kubernetes cluster. As I said, this is not limited to Kubernetes. So once you understand this concept, you can uh, practically do this in anywhere you want. So in my example, I have a Kubernetes cluster and I have a sales namespace. I'm not going to dig into this what is namespace or something. Just think like it's a package in your Java project, think like that. So I have a, a sales namespace. In the sales namespace, I have a sales order service, four instances are running. 
I have instance 1, 2, 3, 4, right? So what is the four instances are running? That means we are horizontally scaling it. So let's say my one service is take only 10 TPS, I need 30 TPS or 35 TPS. So therefore I'm running four instances. So that is what it does. And then Kubernetes taking care of the load balancing for these services and then you can use a mesh framework like a linkerd. I'm not going to dig into that because that is not our scope in this particular video, right? So now let's assume sales order service, we have a new uh, release coming, right? So now we are deploying the release to Kubernetes cluster. So if you take inside this sales in order service, you can see there are multiple modules are there. There are HTTP endpoints and there are Kafka consumers. There are Redis cache agents for the caching works, uh, cache reads and writes. And there are cron jobs are uh, uh, embedded to this service. And there are background processors and there are file agent processors which is read, uh, which is do the input output. I get that this little unusual to have a cron jobs on uh, uh, scaled service because then multiple cons are uh, waking up at the same time. There are ways to handle it and maybe cron jobs are not there, but sake of I'm um, just to get this example, I put the cron jobs are there. Okay. So now let's assume. So we are going to do the new release rollout. So how usually this works is we can do the rollout restart. As I said, that solve the uh, downtime problem because then uh, at any given time, at least one instance are up and running that is guaranteed on the rollout deployment but it doesn't solve the graceful shutdown problem that means let's say i'm a service i'm instance so now kubernetes says hey i'm, I'm going to deploy a new version you go home so now i'm middle of something right i need some time to finish my work and go otherwise I may be drop my work. Let's say I'm inserting 1000 records to database. I'm right now in the 500, right? So then if the Kubernetes kill me, other 500 will be completely lost. I need to prevent that. That is why the rollout restart completely doesn't solve our problem. So now let's see how this works in the Kubernetes environment or, or any, any kind of a, this type of a scale environment. So when the orchestration framework or underlying framework wants to particular service to uh, roll out or remove and get the new instance running, what it does is it sends something called seek term. That means the termination signal. So that's usually kill minus 15 command if you're doing manually. So what that does is it tells the service, hey, I'm issuing you a termination signal, pack your bag and get ready to go. That is what it is simply saying. So now service should aware about this and service should shut down its other processors and connections and everything and finish its work because at some point the my cluster going to kill me, right? So if you're not aware of this, what happens is if you didn't pack your bag and if you didn't leave on time, then as cluster issue a seek kill command like kill minus nine technically so what that does is it just kill you on the spot it doesn't give you any zircon you to wait it's just a hard kill so now this is the problem comes so if your service is not aware about the sig term what happens is let's say you are middle of a process and then sig term comes okay you complete this and you start a new job to run right probably new cron job or a new background process you're starting you are subscribed to the queue, you get the one message you process, seek term already issued, you don't care, it. you take the next message and execute, you take next message and execute. The moment you execute the message, the Kubernetes issue will see kill, that means you're permanently dead now. So, right? so you have a half-baked work. That is why we need to uh, listen to the seek term. Okay, let's see how we can do it. So we can, when you deploy into a, any cluster managed environment, any managed cluster, it can be a Kubernetes, it doesn't matter if you, even it is not. So there are something called probes. What that does is, it kind of a health checks. So your controller sends the heartbeat signal in any, any given interval to your service to see whether the service is up and running and responding. Right? If it is not responding, if the server, if these liveness probes are failing, what happens is the cluster will kill the instance and get a new instance running because cluster guaranteed I need to run minimum this number of instances. Let's say it, you configure to have a minimum five instances. If the one instance liveness probe is not responding, then cluster decide, okay, I'm going to kill this because he's dead or he's stuck somewhere. I'm going to replace it with someone else, right? So that is where the, these probes are uh, helpful. There are two main probes are there. One is a liveness probe and other one is a readiness probe. What the liveness probe does is, it tells the cluster, I am alive. 
that's that's what it told all that's all whole responsibility of the uh, liveness probe and then there's a readiness probe what the readiness probe does is it tells the cluster i am ready to take the traffic right see the difference one telling i am alive other one telling i am ready to take the traffic so if the liveness probe is up but the readiness probe is down then cluster won't kill this instance instead of that cluster will not give new work to this instance see you can you can nicely control your workload right so if you are busy if you see you are busy you can tell cluster hey i'm busy don't give me any more uh, request let me to finish my work something like that so that is the way you have a readiness and liveness probe understand this properly what the each probe does is so here we what we important is a readiness probe right so now we can implement http endpoint like a health endpoint and we can configure it to the cluster saying hey this is my readiness probe you send a call to this uh, readiness probe if i respond properly then you can assume that i am ready to take the traffic and if i send a false or any given a status code what you want and then you tell the cluster hey look i am busy or i am dying or something don't give me any more work i am done for the day something like that now we know readiness and the liveness probe we are going to use this readiness probe for something else so that is we are telling kubernetes hey look you can issue me a signal but give me some time to pack up my work right so it it depend on each service so it's better to have this a service level configuration some service maybe it's running uh, like larger jobs like it take 10 minutes to run like say if you have a background process or batch job is 10 minutes to run some jobs may be uh, take 5 minutes sometimes some service may be 30 minutes it, who knows it depend on each service right So now what you can do is you tell Kubernetes once you issue the SIG term, do not send me a SIG kill within this period. So that is we call termination grace period in second. So in this given example, I have set it to 600 seconds. That means 10 minutes. That means I am telling Kubernetes, hey look, you can issue me a SIG term. I am going to start pack my bag, but give me 10 minutes maximum before you send the SIG kill. Now if you have any proxy or a, a service mesh, something like a linkage, you need to tell that framework also. Once you get the SIG term, you need to wait this type of period uh, before you act on that. So that is what here I give an example on the linkage. We are saying 540 seconds. You wait 540 seconds before you issue the uh, SIG kill. So now during that period, what we do? right you can see in this example here we are listening to the sig term once the sig term comes what you do is we set the readiness probe to false what that mean we are not ready to take any more work why because my cluster telling me hey go home right this is you can say this is something like redundant because kubernetes by nature once is issue the sig term it won't give any more work for you that's true that is there but the problem is this so we have uh, so many internal processes like in our example kafka redis and the database connection file readers and so and so we can indicate to them we are going to die we are dying right we don't have a time to do any more new work so pack up your existing work so that is why i am setting the readiness probe to false so i can do two things right one stone two birds i can tell the internal uh, modules we are going to die we are about to die and i can tell the kubernetes uh, health probe saying hey i'm not ready to take any more traffic so now in this example what i do is i uh, initiate the express server to shut down so now it will like let's say there are uh, two active connections two requests came let's say there is a express server so two http requests came now it's the middle of processing So when I issue the server to close, what happens is it wait until this active connection finish, and as soon as one uh, those connection finish, it trigger the server shutdown. So we can do the same thing. We can use the, this global variable, and we can say, hey, con, background processes, Kafka, anything and everything, they are listening to this before they start a new work. They are going to see whether this readiness probe is up. If the readiness probe is up, they are starting new work, and if the readiness probe is down, they they are not starting new work. if they start new work they are saying hey look i start the work they put a flag and when they finish the work they can say i'm done with the work so then there can be a central place we are listening to all every single flags it configured when everyone is completed it work it can send the signal back to if you have a linkerd to the linkerd or as your kubernetes say hey now i'm ready issue me the sig kill or you can do a self suicide thing self suicide doesn't make any sense i suicide been the self kill whatever 
right so you get the idea so that is how you can do it so now this is a zero downtime you don't need a downtime at all at any given time you can roll out a feature to your uh, cluster your production because your production services existing services knows how to finish its current work and gracefully shut down so this graceful shutdown mechanism tested and proven and it worked with me for like years and years without any issue so if you have a different solution different ideas and feel free to comment i get that there are frameworks to handle this type of thing but i'm just explain how you can manually control take this full control to your hand and implement this if you really need to do it see you in the next video until then stay safe and take care